The narrative that pajamas and sweatpants tell, hashtag formal Fridays, and wearing a dress as a uniform? Welcome to three more articles on the subject of dress. Welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. My name is Jennifer, and I'm coming to you from my dining room with a cup of tea and three more articles on the subject of dress. I know we're going through a very trying and tumultuous time right now with the virus and everything that's going on with that. I am continuing this series during this time because while this is not the most important subject in the world, I know that this subject brings a lot of joy to people and we love to discuss it. So let's take our mind off of everything that is going on right now and dive into these articles. Before we begin, I just wanna let you know that I launched my new e-course this past weekend, Carry Yourself With Poise. It is a wonderful course. I've been working on it for about five months. It has over two hours of video instruction, plus written texts and really fun quizzes. And there's already a lot of people as I'm speaking on the course in the comment section. So you have a lot of like-minded people who are interested in carrying themselves with poise there. This is a fun and seemingly frivolous subject, but it's actually one that can take you really far in life. So I'm very passionate about that e-course. It is offered down below so I hope you'll check it out. My e-courses are very affordable. Okay, let's get into the three articles on the subject of dress. Okay, the first article was sent to me by Ginger Willis, and I just wanna thank everybody who sends me these articles. Sometimes multiple people send me the same article. I try to give credit where I can. So Ginger sent me this one from the Washington Post. That says, our clothes tell our story. What happens when the narrative is just pajamas and sweats? To work from home and never take off your pajamas can, at first, feel like a kind of liberation, a celebration of comfort and a rebuke to stuffy corporate rules that demand pantyhose in summer and a jacket at all times. But going through an entire day in loungewear, it's easy to lose yourself and your sense of purpose and focus. Our clothes create boundaries. They mark time. Folks who regularly work from home speak of the need to change out of their pajamas into something, anything else to announce their day has begun. To not feel like a sloth, to feel ready to face the world because without the world, who are you? When we go out into the community, our clothes allow us to have our say without ever opening our mouths. We settle into a coffee shop in our favorite jeans and a message t-shirt and we can make a political statement or a childish joke. We can send up a rallying cry for black lives or black girl magic or feminism. A MAGA hat sparks rage or solidarity. We can plead for the environment or make the case for a favored artist or musician. Fashion is a form of communication that is both intimate and aloof. Without ever uttering a word, you stand behind your message because you are, in fact, wearing it. Clothing is an eloquent form of communication for the inarticulate. It can also be used as a costume when one would prefer to make a show of taking action rather than rolling up one's sleeves and getting on with it. When we ask ourselves, what should I wear today? We are asking a much bigger set of questions. Who am I? What am I expecting from this day? How do I see my life moving forward? When we can no longer find a reason to consider our attire, even just a little bit, even for the briefest outing, we go silent, and our story in all of its nuance, grandeur, and humanity goes untold. So as we isolate ourselves at home, our clothes can be our pep talk, an impassioned soliloquy. As we scurry along the street, dutiful in our social distancing, our clothes become glancing waves, reminders that at some point we will speak to each other again. So I loved this article. I thought it was really well written by Robin Givon, who's a fashion critic over at the Washington Post. And I thought she made some really good uh, points in her article. And she's so right. And, and there's a line in here that, uh, ah, I love this. Okay, I'm gonna reread this line. It says, fashion is a form of communication that is both intimate and aloof. Without ever uttering a word, you stand behind your message because you are in fact wearing it. So our clothes, I've been saying this for a long time, I believe what we wear matters, our clothes send a message, and why? And, and it is a deliberate message because we chose them and we are wearing them. And so she says, and, and she makes such a good point with the political statements, for example, people who wear shirts with slogans on them uh, for different political ideas or parties or causes or passions, it sparks something in people, either outrage or solidarity or support or sympathy. And so our clothes really do matter. I love how she talks about our clothes tell a story. 
So what story are we telling with our clothing? So what happens if we wear our pajamas and sweatpants every day? And it's kind of like that tree that falls in the forest. If no one's there to observe it, did it really happen? So if we are at home in lockdown on quarantine, does what we wear at home really matter if nobody else sees us? I think even if you live alone, it matters. Even if nobody is seeing you for the next six weeks, I still think it matters because it, um, it just boosts your morale. You act differently in your clothing. And there is a reason why you would wear something special to uh, visit someone special, like someone famous. Maybe you're visiting the queen. You would wear something special, right? Or you would um, dress a certain way to be taken seriously for a job interview, for court, for something like that. There's a reason why, because it's true. So I really do think it is important to dress well at home. I've been saying this for years. So. I thought that was a really great article. What do you think? Let us know down below. Okay, Charlene Ryan sent this next uh, article to me and it says, New Zealand scrubs up for hashtag formal Fridays despite coronavirus lockdown. It says Kiwis are keeping their spirits and sartorial standards up by working from home while dressed in suits, business attire, or full evening wear. Proving that clothes maketh even the virtual man, many New Zealanders are spending their second day of a nationwide lockdown dressed to the nines as part of the burgeoning Formal Fridays movement. This article is a few weeks old, as you can tell. <laughs> the practice introduced to the world by US talk show host Jimmy Kimmel encourages the millions of people currently under lockdowns or working from home in self-isolation to take off their athleisure and tracksuits for a day and instead dress fancy. Kimmel issued the challenge last week on his quarantine Minilog series recorded from his home in which he offered viewers a suggested framework for their days. First, it's very important to put on pants at some point for at least two hours a day, he said. <laughs> My wife is suggesting a formal Friday where you can get all dressed up for dinner even if you're alone. Maybe we'll do that. Kimmel invited viewers to take photographs of themselves dressed up, a challenge that New Zealanders have embraced, posting pictures of themselves keeping their spirits and sartorial standards up by working from home while dressed in suits, business attire, and full evening wear under the hashtag formal Friday NZ. So I thought that that was kind of a fun article and I love that it's fun to dress up for no reason and it is fun to dress up for home, even just a quiet dinner at home. So I thought that that was a fun um, article to kind of boost people's spirits uh, during this time. So let me know, do you participate in formal Fridays? Have you done a hashtag formal Friday? Maybe I should do one. Okay, and the last article was sent to me by Joy Forney, who is a dear friend of mine, and she's over on Instagram. I can leave her Instagram down below. She does the 10 item wardrobe. She sent me this article called Women in Uniform, Why I Only Wear Dresses by Kat Thompson. This article is from Glamour Magazine from a few years back actually, so let's have a look at what she says. She says, for as long as I can remember, I've had a love affair with dresses. Other than some very rare occasions, mainly when I'm on my motorcycle or on a horse, I wear dresses exclusively. No jeans, no jumpsuits, no cutoffs, no culottes, just dresses. It all started when I got my first designer number at the tender age of three. Okay, so Miss Thompson talks about five reasons why she chooses dresses as her uniform. Number one, she says they're the most flattering for my particular shape. She said finding an outfit that will fit my 25 inch waist and 39 inch hips and bust is rare. I have, in the words of a dear friend, curves like a race car track. With a dress, particularly a 50s era fit and flare style that highlights my waist, I always feel like I'm putting my best shape forward. So I can relate to that. I don't have those proportions, but <laughs> I can certainly relate to that. I think dresses look better on me than jeans do just because of the way that my body is shaped. Okay, number two, individually packaging my thighs isn't on my priority list. She says, don't get me wrong, I love my legs, they're strong, I can still do the splits at age 35, and they're excellent for displaying my collection of Christian Louboutin heels. They're just not the part of my body I like showing off. So the idea of throwing them into focus in a pair of skinnies, or worse, a pair of shorts, is not my jam, so I don't. She says, number three, I'm sartorially lazy. You wouldn't think it since I seem so polished and pulled together in all these pretty dresses. In reality, however, it took me about four seconds to choose my entire outfit and I don't care to spend any more than that. Yes, this is why I love dresses because you just choose one thing and you're done. You don't have to worry about combining things, matching things, getting things that go together. It's just one thing and you're done. I totally agree with that. Number four, I'm immune to trends, at least partly. Dresses have become a uniform for me and as a result, I don't feel the pressure to chase trends from season to season. Yes, amen to that, me too. 
Number five, I embrace femininity in my wardrobe, if not always in my activities. I have many unusual physically demanding hobbies, quail hunting, motorcycle riding, competitive archery, and playing electric bass in a country rock band. She really does have a lot of eclectic hobbies, which might not seem ladylike. So when I'm out of the garage, off the range, and not getting my hands dirty, it feels nice to get cleaned up and wear something totally different. And number six, it leads to better connections with people. It's not the best reason, but it's one I encounter a lot. For whatever reason, I get a lot more smiles and friendly vibes from people when I'm in one of my ladylike frocks than I do in just about anything else. So the article goes on, but I found her um, reasons to be very relatable. That's exactly what I experience as well. And you know, I wear both. I wear pants, I wear jumpsuits, I love jumpsuits, and I wear dresses. But dresses are my favorite things to wear, and um, I just, love to wear them. And so for that reason, I love the idea of a dress as a uniform. So I'm all with her on that. Okay, so I would love to know your thoughts on the three articles on dress. Let us know what you think. What do you think about dresses as a uniform? Do you do this too? Hashtag formal Fridays. And also what type of narrative do sweats and pajamas tell? What type do they tell? All right, thank you so much for joining me today on The Daily Connoisseur. Don't forget to check out my new e-course, Carry Yourself with Poise. I will leave a link down below. Thanks everyone, and I will see you next time. Bye.